10 Differences Between True Love and Fake Love. Omusaji ali wali ba muita musumba, musumba imiri na kuba kula be moana, mumu kumi na kuku bugalo yachari wange moana. Yaman, that is my father. Chameleon goya gamba palaso musumba bagambe. Oyo ya musumba goya yari agamba. Oyo tata wange mubulundi mububi mubavu mubugaga nemburuande. Kuaga la nyachari wange kano kawere zamu chala wo. Kiana, this song is for you. Alexia, this special one is for you. Tell mama, I say what's up. Tell mama, Palazzo became a superstar. When you're looking at a relationship from the inside, it's not always easy to see the differences between authentic and fake love. But it's not impossible either. So, how can you determine whether you're in a genuinely loving relationship or just infatuated with fake love? For some, it comes down to a sense of security. When you experience unconditional love, your heart and soul know that your love is true. While some doubts are normal, no matter who you're with, persistent doubts and intense insecurity could be a sign that it's time to exit the relationship. If you feel like you can't live without your partner, but at the same time, you can't talk to them about your feelings, your future together, or your doubts, it's probably not true love. To shed some light on your relationship, here are 10 distinctions between true love and fake love. Sacrifice versus self-concern. In a loving relationship, both people make sacrifices in order to reach a compromise. In a hollow relationship, your significant other's priority will always be them, not you or your feelings. Just think about it. Does your partner consider your feelings when they make decisions? Whether it's where you go for dinner, how often you talk to each other, or deciding where to live, do they try to predict or ask how you might feel? Real love involves mutual decision-making, especially about the big things. Fake love is inconsiderate. If you're stuck in an unloving relationship, you might feel that your partner is selfish and reckless with your emotions, and they probably are. Connection versus correction. Have you ever seen a couple who can read each other's minds? It might seem impossibly romantic, but the truth is that they just know how to pay attention. When two people love each other fully and unconditionally, they form a deep connection that allows them to understand the other's thought processes. They do this by always responding to their partner's bids for connection, whether it's about something serious or lighthearted. When someone sees you as important, they will listen to everything you have to say, even if it's trivial. In contrast, a fake relationship doesn't prioritize genuine connection. Instead, your partner may respond to you with apathy or negativity even correcting and invalidating your thoughts and feelings. Transparency versus darkness. Even though it can be ugly at times, the truth is always valued in a loving relationship. Transparency wipes away doubt and establishes security, paving the way for a faithful relationship built on trust. Fake love doesn't prioritize honesty. It can be filled with lies, omissions, and embellishments, leaving many things hidden in the dark. Often, deception is used as a tool for manipulation, and it can spoil a relationship, even if one partner is completely transparent. In a healthy relationship, honesty is two-sided, even if it means sharing uncomfortable secrets. Humble versus proud. In a deeply loving relationship, both people hold themselves accountable for their actions. This is what it means to be humble. They take responsibility, admit their mistakes, and apologize when they need to. In a fake relationship, pride wins out over the health of the relationship. One or both partners might care more about being right or feeling superior. They may often let their significant other down and leave problems unresolved just to preserve their pride. If your love is real, you are both open to putting aside your egos for the sake of the relationship. Grateful versus envious. True love fills your life with gratitude. You appreciate your partner for everything that they are and everything they do, and they feel the same way about you. When one of you accomplishes something great, you both celebrate that achievement as if it were your own. If your relationship is based on fake love, life may feel like a competition. 
This outlook breeds envy, greed, and jealousy. Instead of sharing joyous moments, fake lovers belittle each other's triumphs and emphasize their faults. Dissatisfaction and bitterness are sure signs of a love that is untrue. Complete versus Empty Your emotions are the most helpful guide in determining whether your love is real or not. A truly loving relationship that is built on healthy communication and genuine connection will bring about a sense of peace and wholeness. Fake love is always accompanied by an empty feeling, no matter how much time you spend together. Relationships that lack a meaningful foundation are doomed to fail. If you're in one, you'll always be wanting more. Respected versus taken for granted A genuine relationship is also built on mutual respect. In a healthy partnership, there is no room for disrespect, whether it regards decision-making, planning for the future, or even simple opinions. Both partners are encouraging and supportive, even if they don't completely understand their significant other's desires. What matters most is the other person's happiness, and the idea of neglecting each other's aspirations isn't appealing. In contrast, a relationship built on fake love always involves one or both people taking their partner for granted. Their disrespect may be disguised as humor or playfulness, but if someone treats your dreams like a joke, then they don't respect you. This behavior is a clear sign that your relationship is unhealthy because it indicates that your emotions are not important to your partner. Hopeful versus Unplanned Another way to tell the difference between a healthy and unsustainable relationship is whether or not your plans for the future align. True lovers plan their future together and ensure that their vision works for both of them. Even when they fight and struggle, which is normal for a healthy relationship, they are secure in knowing that they'll come out on the other side together. In a healthy relationship, both partners put in equal effort, provide stability, and cultivate a hopeful future. Unless your relationship is new, an unplanned future or plan that doesn't include both people is a sign that your love isn't true. Fake lovers will give up easily on the relationship, since they never expected it to last in the first place. Intent versus Neglect If your relationship is based on true love, you love each other intentionally. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you intend on falling in love, but that once you do, you live your life with the intention to continue and grow that love. Think of it as a promise or a commitment. While fake love also involves making promises, it doesn't always deliver on them. Unloving relationships lack commitment and breed neglect. Characterized by broken promises and hollow reassurances, fake love disappoints. Stronger versus weaker. Real love stands the test of time. It may change through the years, but it doesn't fade away. The roots of real love only grow stronger and deeper as both partners build trust, navigate life, and make compromises together. Fake love, on the other hand, thrives on a heat that can't last. Instead of establishing an emotional connection, both people may prioritize physical things. Built on a novel experience or excitement, fake love collapses when things simmer down. If you find yourself wondering if your relationship is healthy or not, it's time to take a closer look at things. While it is normal to have occasional doubts, bicker and disagree with your significant other, if your relationship lacks communication, trust, accountability, or respect, the foundation of your relationship is not strong enough to last. Have you ever experienced fake love? How did you find out? What were some of the signs? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends so we can keep making them. The 5 Stages of Relationships Falling in love is something that just about everybody goes through in their lifetime, even if it's only once. When you fall in love with somebody, you begin to realize that being in love isn't the hard part. The hard part is working to maintain the relationship. Every relationship is different, which is why it's difficult to navigate your way through them. You can't always use techniques that have worked for you and your other partners in the past. From what we can tell, relationships typically go through five stages. The way you handle these bumps in the road will predict how the relationship itself will turn out. It's difficult for a lot of people to recognize these stages in relationships. However, the inability to recognize what is happening in your relationship can easily cause it to fall apart. Learning to identify these stages and how they affect your relationship will come in handy when you and your partner are going through them. 1. The Romance Stage 
When we fall in love with somebody, it's hard for us to recognize their bad qualities. We get so caught up in the pure fascination we have for them that we fail to see anything wrong with them. While we are seeing our partners through a screen of perfection, they are also seeing us the same way. But the seemingly endless dream doesn't last forever. Typically, this stage doesn't last more than two years. Let's dive a little deeper and look at the romance stage through the lens of evolution. When the human race developed, nature wanted to create something to ensure that our species wouldn't become extinct. Thus, human beings were born with reproductive organs and thought processes to communicate our feelings toward one another. As nature continued to adapt, humans eventually developed the feeling we now call love. This allowed us to bond with one another and form intimate relationships. However, when we fall in love, we tend to fall in love with somebody who wouldn't normally be considered compatible with us. Although we may see them as someone who makes all of our dreams come true, they also have the capability to do the opposite. But why would nature intend for us to fall in love with someone so incompatible? Typically, we fall in love with people because their personality traits are opposite to ours. This allows us to fit together like pieces of a puzzle. This person's good traits compensate for our bad ones, and vice versa. And when you fit these two puzzle pieces together, it creates a new piece. A piece that the puzzle could never be complete without. A piece of nature more resilient and more likely to survive and ensure the continuation of the human species. When we look back on it, we often wonder how we could have fallen in love with somebody who was so different from ourselves. But nature intended for us to fall in love, and it made sure we would by having our brains release what we call feel-good hormones, including oxytocin, phenylethylamine, serotonin, and dopamine. These hormones give aid to a biochemical process that rids us of stressors and fills us with infatuation. This is why it's so hard for us to recognize our partner's flaws. These hormones hide our flaws and encourage us to do whatever we can to keep the romance alive. While we aren't actually lying to our partners, we're wearing a mask of adoration. Taking off this mask and revealing who we really are may influence our partner to leave, so we keep it on. Knowing this, in order to avoid any major confrontations or confusion with your partner, you can work on bringing up somewhat difficult topics with them, such as whether or not you both want children or wish to be married. Although this infatuation stage makes it seem like everything is fine and peachy, it inevitably wears off. At this point in time, you may look at your partner and realize out of nowhere that they're the most incompatible person to yourself that you could ever think of. This tends to happen when either of you begin to worry about a sort of permanence in the bond. This could include dating exclusively, moving in together, getting engaged, or whatever else may worry you when it comes to permanency. This is where the next stage kicks in. 2. The Power Struggle Stage when we think of relationships, we tend to think of the picture-perfect ones that we see in movies or read about in novels. This makes it easy for us to assume that our relationships can never be perfect unless they're identical to the ones we've seen portrayed. This stage causes a lot of tension and pain between partners due to the fact that the peachy keen love you once had has disintegrated before your eyes. We sometimes replace these missing emotions with anger, which leads to more problems in itself. We stop focusing on what used to make our partners seem so perfect, and we begin to recognize only what makes them seem almost repulsive to us. When couples go through this stage in their relationship, one of them will usually become withdrawn. They feel betrayed because their partner has turned into a completely different person from the one they originally fell in love with. When one partner does this, the other will pursue them by demanding attention, all the while feeling afraid of being emotionally abandoned. While this stage is usually very difficult for most couples, it also presents the chance to look into yourself and re-establish your independence in the relationship. Sometimes this stage takes a toll on people, and they begin thinking that all of their effort was just a waste, and it would take too much work to rebuild what they once had. This is when couples tend to split apart, in order to search for somebody who they think would be more suitable for them. This is also why most divorces happen during this stage. 3. The Stability Stage if you and your partner learn to confront each other respectively about your issues and recognize your own issues as well, you move on to this stage. After getting through the bumps in the road, you and your partner fall into a deeper and more thrilling love than ever before. Although you may have wanted to at first, you now realize that you cannot change your partner, and you have no wish to try anymore. You see them for everything that they are, the good and the bad, and you're willing to accept it. 
Although most individuals would want to plant themselves into the stage of a relationship, doing so can make it easy for them to become bored. After a while, you may begin to realize that the thrill of being in love is wandering away, and you need something special to keep it alive. Partners typically resolve these issues by creating shared experiences and maintaining the feeling of adventure in their relationship. 4. The Commitment Stage When it comes to relationships, people often associate commitment with marriage, even though that's not typically what the stage is supposed to represent. However, while many couples make the mistake of marrying while still in the romance stage of their relationship, this is the stage in which you and your partner are actually ready for marriage. When you and your partner reach this stage, you have both realized that you don't need each other, you both want each other. You've recognized that you both have faults and neither of you are perfect. But even though you recognize these shortcomings, you still desire to be with each other, and you both fall into an endless wave of balanced, adventurous freedom. With that said, many people trick themselves into believing that since they've gotten this far, and it feels so good, that their work as a team must be done. Often they also tend to sacrifice their own goals in life to spend more time with their significant other instead, or they become lazy in maintaining their emotional connection. The truth is, both of you are growing and evolving, so your work as a couple is never done. You will always have to rediscover each other. 5. The Bliss Stage Once you've reached this stage, you and your partner become consciously aware of your love for each other, and you decide to move out into the world to show it. And as nature gave you life and the ability to create such a blissful experience together, it now calls on you to give back. Lots of couples decide to give back to society by donating to charities, raising children, volunteering in their community, or starting a family business. But remember, if you and your partner have been together for a long time, you must be sure to continue nurturing your relationship so problems don't arise. Although relationships can be tough sometimes, it's important to learn how to handle things effectively. Falling in love isn't something that occurs all the time, and when you begin to recognize the stages in your relationship, it becomes easier to deal with them properly. Remember that it's natural to lose certain feelings for people at times, and not everything lasts forever, but that doesn't mean you have to regret it. All in all, putting in the time and effort to nurture your relationship will pay off in unimaginable ways. What do you think? If you're in a relationship, which stage are you in right now? And what do you find the most challenging about that stage? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell so you get notified when we post a new video. Thanks for watching.